everybody, Elizabeth Hines here from the Autoimmune Free Cooking Club and Total Wellness Health Coaching. I'm back with another yummy recipe for you tonight. We're going to make chicken tenders, chicken fingers, chicken strips, whatever you want to call those, in the air fryer. So back in um, late fall, I bought this air fryer. It's the Instant Pot Vortex Plus. Is that right? Vortex Plus. And I will link it down below for some reason. So I bought mine on Amazon. If I just go into Amazon and I type in Instant Pot, Vortex Plus, or whatever, it doesn't come up. I have to actually go back and go through my orders and find it, and then I can click on that link, and then I can um, put it down in the notes for you. So I will put the link to this particular model um, in the notes below the video. So if you're interested in giving this one a try, um, clicking that link should take you to it without any problem. This particular model, the Plus model, has... Um, the dehydrate function which works great i have um, i've made beef jerky for a long time and it would take i mean the whole day to dehydrate it in my oven at 200 i think is as low as my oven goes um and i did it in about an hour in in this guy and i just threw all the meat in the basket and i just i did it while i was at home and i just opened it up and tossed it around about every 10 minutes or so and it was perfect. It, it did a great, great job. I was afraid I would have to, you know, lay each piece out individually and do it in lots of batches. But, nope, I, I went the easy way to try, and it worked great. So um, I am happy to report that the dehydrate function works really well. Um, let me just tell you real quick, this particular model, I chose it because it's big. I have just a family of four. Um, but I wanted to be able to reasonably cook a meal for my family in this without having to do like 12 batches of something. Um, because if I'm doing that, I might as well do it in my oven or on my stove or something. Um, and there's not a huge benefit. So I wanted a big enough one. I really wanted um, more of a rectangle or a square shape and um, the nonstick finish. And this little tray comes out. It's super easy to clean. I really like this one. So I just wanted you to see it, and I'm going to turn it around so it faces me um, in just a second. It's super fast, so I need to kind of tell you things before I even get started. So if you're new here, hi, welcome. I would love it if you'd leave a comment, introduce yourself so I can welcome you personally. Um, I am a functional medicine health coach. I have healed my own autoimmune disease, and um, my husband has type 1 diabetes, which is also autoimmune. Can't heal that one. Um, but we keep his under control. Um, and I'm trying to keep my kids from getting an autoimmune disease. So we do that with diet and lifestyle, functional medicine. And diet is a huge piece of that. And so way back when we decided to live this way, I figured I'm going to have to learn how to cook in a way that's going to keep my family happy if they're going to go along with this and not revolt. And so I just started taking all of our old family favorite recipes and turning them into paleo, grain-free, dairy-free, soy-free, that kind of thing. Um, and so chicken fingers is one of the very first recipes I came up with, and everybody loves it. Nobody complains. Um, as a health coach, I work with people all the time, mostly women, but some dads too, where either they're trying to heal their own disease and don't want to have to cook two different meals, or they go into it thinking, oh, I'm going to have to cook something for my kids and something different for myself, um, or it's the parents cooking for the kids, so to help heal the children's um, medical conditions. And they're all stressed out because they're trying to cook two different types of food. And I'm like, wait, that is not necessary. Um, we can make the kid favorites, and we can train the kids to like other things besides um, kid favorites as well. But today we're doing a kid favorite. We're doing chicken fingers, and um, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's super simple and it's super fast. Um, I am probably going to have to do two batches in here, but it's still fast. So let me get this preheated. We're going to do 400 for 10 minutes. So all I do is, um, it got mad at me. I'm going to click air fry. It's on 375, so I want to press temp and just turn it up to 400. Okay, press temp again. And then the time, I want 10 minutes. And start. And it'll tell me to add the food and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave it facing you for just a second. So in this pan, I have my chicken tenders, chicken breast that's just been cut into strips, and then two eggs. I just beat up the eggs, mix those together. In this pan, I'll write down everything down below. 
so you don't have to write this down. But I just have a bunch of spices. I have almond flour, arrowroot, and then a whole bunch of spices. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot one. Ah, of course, now that I got my fingers dirty. I want a little bit of baking powder in here. We'll just help give it a nice rise. Just a half a teaspoon. Uh, so my original recipe way back for the chicken fingers, I would marinate my chicken in dill pickle juice, which is one of the secrets from Chick-fil-A, if you have Chick-fil-A near you. And so you can do that. If you happen to have pickle juice, you can marinate your chicken in pickle juice. And then your breading, you can just do the almond flour, the arrowroot, the baking powder, and salt and pepper. But a lot of people just don't have jars of pickle juice lying around. We do, because my son's favorite food is still pickles. And we grow cucumbers in the summer, and he makes, he cans his own pickles. And so we have a lot of pickle juice, and it's um, pure ingredients, because um, we're making it ourselves, okay? But if you don't have that, you can get the same flavors with this combination of spices. It's paprika, garlic, salt, pepper, celery salt, onion powder, mustard, and oregano. And in fact, I have not been able to find celery salt since before Christmas. I don't know what's going on with the celery salt, um, but I just used celery seed and a little bit more salt in my, um, in my breading. So I'm just dipping each piece of chicken in the egg, no marinating or anything required and then bread it. Now, if you're gonna do a whole bunch, you can. I have this tray with a rack in it, and I turn my oven on to 300, just so I can, once my chicken is done, I can put it on that rack. It will help it stay crispy, and put it in the oven to stay warm while I cook my second batch. But you could also have another rack like that, and bread all your chicken and have it ready ahead of time um, and have it laying on the on the rack. All right, so what does it say? Did it say add food? So the time is going to start ticking down because I didn't open the door. So I'm going to hurry and bread this last one here for my first batch and open that door. So you just pull it open. This is an avocado oil spray, which is what I recommend, avocado or coconut. And then you just lay your pieces in. Sometimes things get stuck in that little center section, so I try not to put something there if I can help it. But I have plenty of times put something on that center section. It's fine. It just sometimes will stick. Um, like if you're doing french fries, let me see, I think I'll do one more. Um, french fries, something like that, that you would just like empty a bag and throw it in there, um, is totally fine for it to go in that little center section. Okay, so this hand was clean. So I'm just gonna spray the tops now with my oil. You see how they go from looking dry to wet? You want them to look wet. You wanna have that breading coated um, so it'll get crispy. All right, now we put it in and it'll start up and it'll say, it's usually not in exactly at the halfway point. It's usually at about, so, so like I did 10 minutes. It'll, I think when there are about four minutes left, it'll say to turn the food. So it's a little over halfway. It tells you to turn your food. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish breading these. I'm just going to leave them in this, oh, I always forget, which is my dry hand, which is my wet hand. I always start out with good intentions of keeping one dry and one wet, and then I forget and mess it up. So this is really all there is to it. They're super, super good. Um, the flavoring in here, all those different spices, um, give it a really great flavor. Kids like to dip, so get yourself a good um, ketchup that's made with organic tomatoes and some kind of natural sugar or a low sugar at least, um, or make your own sauce, which I'm gonna make a sauce here for you in just a second. Um, and then you have super kid-friendly food that's actually really clean, pure ingredients, nothing that you need to shy away from. 
serve it up with your favorite veggies. We're tonight just going to have a big salad because that's what I have that's fresh that needs to be used up. So try to, if you uh, bread some ahead like I've just done here, try to kind of lay them apart so that um, they don't stick to each other. If you kind of pile the chicken up, it, the breading will make it stick. All right, I gotta wash hands again. Okay, because I'm gonna be dealing with cooked foods, my sauce here, let me just wipe this down with an antibacterial wipe, just to be safe. All right, so to make a homemade sauce is so easy. Um, you can make all sorts of different sauces, um, but we're having chicken fingers and we like honey mustard with that. So you would think it would just be honey and mustard. I need a little bit more. But no, it's really a mayonnaise base. This is um, Chosen Foods avocado oil mayo, which is really tasty. And I get that at Costco. But I do have a video on making homemade mayonnaise. It's super, super easy. It's oil and an egg, lemon juice, salt, pepper if you want. That's it. So you just use some mayonnaise, some mustard, some honey, which if you're trying to go low sugar, you could use a liquid stevia, put in a few drops of stevia. If you go with the stevia, you will probably need to thin out your sauce just a little bit. The honey um, makes it liquefy a little bit. Then I like a little bit of onion powder in my honey mustard, which is my preference. Then we taste it. Because we just threw a bunch of stuff in. I want a little bit more mustard. And I want a little bit more honey. This particular mayonnaise, I've been buying it because it's super, super convenient and it's a really good price at Costco. Now, the taste of it is okay, but it has a little bit of a strong taste. Um, which I like my mayonnaise to be real neutral. Now that's good. Um, so I end up usually adding a little bit more um, honey, a little bit more mustard, when I, or whatever kind of flavoring or whatever kind of sauce I'm making when I use that, um, that chosen foods mayo. That looks yummy. So good, so fast, totally clean ingredients. We know exactly what's in there. And, to clean that up, right? Um, we're just eating our chicken over salad, and so this can double as a salad dressing. And, perfect timing. I'll move this raw one out of the way. So it's telling me to turn the food, which you don't have to. It's not going to stop working, but I want to, so I pulled it out. Actually, I got out my tongs, but I feel like I have better control when I use these forks. You can see how pretty and golden brown those are already. I'm just going to flip them. So it's stopped running with the door open. Here are just a couple little dry spots, so I'm gonna spray again. And then back in. And that's really all there is to it. Um, when, I, when I pull these out finished, I'll cut one open and I'll show you the inside while we cook the second half. Okay, so you saw when it ended, it stops at that point. Ooh, don't they look beautiful? So now I'll use my clean tongs. And I'll just transfer these to my tray. I mean, don't they look like something that would come from a restaurant? But, you know, those are not amazing ingredients. And we have very clean, safe ingredients. I just did a light spray because there was already oil in there. So just quickly run those around again. 
as you can see, it has started to, um, just the breading got wet. So I just put a little extra. So this second batch will be a little extra crispy, which will be awesome. It's what everybody loves. In they go. I've really been super, super happy with this air fryer. Um, you'll have to go back and watch my first video I did, um, which I'll link that down below where I talk about, you know, people say, oh, it gives off this terrible smell. And um, it does. The very first time I used it. Um, but since then, it hasn't done that. So my settings are still the same. It's just going to have the same settings from last time. So then all I have to do is click start. And we'll be good to go. Let me cut into one of these. Um, I've used it to, you know, make french fries, just the frozen french fries, which you might think, how does that fit in with your healthy diet? You know, it really doesn't. But you can buy organic potatoes, which you want potatoes organic. Um, so you can find organic ones. And you can find kind of clean oil. There's usually expeller pressed canola oil, which expeller pressed is better than not expeller pressed if you're going to have those types of vegetable oils. Um, so no, a frozen french fry is not a perfect food by any means. Um, it's a sometimes food in our house. It's like my daughter's birthday. She wanted french fries, crinkle cut french fries. So we got those for her. Um, but yeah, of course, this is, I mean, made for that kind of thing. Uh, but one of our favorites is actually chicken fajitas, which I think was my first video with the air fryer. Uh, they are delicious, super healthy, totally fit into this diet and everything. So um, this time of year when it's cold, it's January right now. I don't really care about not heating up my kitchen. Actually, I love heating up my kitchen with the oven. But in the summertime, or just warmer weather in general, which in North Carolina, we have that a lot of the year. Um, you don't want to heat up your oven. So to make oven fried chicken fingers, which is how I would typically make them, my oven's on 425 to 450 for a good 30 minutes. And then, you know, you have all that heat that's still coming out of it. So this really helps to not heat up your kitchen. Okay, so can you see crispy on the outside, the breading stuck to my chicken? Let's give it a taste with our honey mustard, of course. It's so good. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect kid food. Adults love chicken fingers too. This would be great for Super Bowl. I'm going to put these in the oven. This would be great for Super Bowl. I have lots of Super Bowl or party kind of food. Um, videos. One of our favorites are mozzarella sticks, which I had thought about trying them in here. You know, homemade mozzarella sticks are tricky because you want the cheese to be soft, but not like melting out. Um, and then trying to do a paleo with a, you know, a gluten-free coating, grain-free coating, um, where the cheese doesn't break through. I figured it out, and I showed you how to do it in that video, but I just cooked them on the stove. I fry them in a skillet. Um, I'm going to try them this year in the air fryer and see how they turn out. So this is it. This is our supper. I have a big salad. I just grated a little um, grass-fed cheddar on top. This is um, balsamic vinaigrette that I've made. I'm pretty sure I have a video for that. You'll have to just search. I've done so many videos through the years, I just don't remember every single one. And then these are some toasted walnuts that I made the other night when we had big salad. And so that's a good way to have something like a crouton, um, something crunchy to use nuts. It's totally paleo, gluten-free. It works for Whole30, you know, a lot of different um, anti-inflammatory diets. Um, and it's crunchy. And I put a little seasoning on them. I actually put um, my Cajun spice blend on there. And uh, they're super, super flavorful and good. And you can find, I have hundreds of recipes. So my website that has the recipes is autoimmunefreecookingclub.com. And we'll link that below. And um, all my recipes are there. But it's a membership site. So when you join my membership, you get all the recipes and a new recipe every single week, all throughout the whole year. 
and they're all paleo, gluten-free, anti-inflammatory, that sort of thing, and um, also health coaching with me and all sorts of functional medicine type information, encouragement, that kind of stuff. So um, that's the membership. But there is a free version, and I have usually about 20 recipes that are that are for free. And you still have to sign up just to get that free membership. I don't spam you. Maybe twice a year I send an email out to, um, to all my free members. So please don't worry about that. Um, but you might not get exactly these recipes. You know, there will be some really good recipes there. Um, and I just don't remember which ones are free right now. But go over there and take a look. And you can see, um, I know chicken pot pie, beef stroganoff, some of my um, most popular recipes are there and are there for free all the time. So definitely go check out the website. All right, I'm, I'm just going to eat this. I, I need to eat it. But it's sitting right there. Okay, it hasn't set to turn it yet, but because I had them in there a teeny bit early, I'm going to go ahead and turn them. They look perfect already. I'll probably stop it just a minute early because, you know, it was hot already. The second batch always seems to cook a little faster than the first batch. Back in they go. So I do save my breading if I have any of that flour left over. Um, it's expensive. It's mostly almond flour. That's expensive. I don't want to waste it. Um, it wasn't yucky. There weren't like huge clumps or anything in it. So I just put it in a baggie. I label it chicken. So I use this again for chicken next time. And I'll probably only make half. It, it, the recipe calls for a cup of almond flour and a half a cup of arrowroot. So I'll just cut this back by half. I'll add this to it and then I'm not wasting. So don't hesitate to save that. Now don't save the chicken, I mean the egg that's had the raw chicken in it, but you can save the bread. Okay, we're all done. Out it comes. I didn't take those out early because I forgot. I forgot. And then I put my tongs in my salad. Let me pull them out of here. Aren't these beautiful? I mean, beautiful. And, you know, there's usually like some little piece of chicken that's just kind of loose in your package. Well, that's what those little three things were. And so they're like perfect little chicken nuggets. So you can absolutely uh, make this same recipe, cut the chicken down into nugget size or um, do big ones like full size chicken breast. No problem. Um, I gotta remember that was just in the oven. So here are our air fryer chicken tenders, super fast, super easy, and super delicious, and totally good for you. You do not need to make separate food for you and for your kids. Everybody can eat the same thing, and everybody can be healthy together. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit the little bell icon, subscribe, share, like, all that stuff. It helps um, to keep this channel going and tells YouTube that you like this kind of content. Um, thank you so much for your time, and I will see you back here in the